On Monday, April 10th of 2023, an employee at the Old National Bank in Louisville, Kentucky, walked inside of his job as normal, but he was carrying a gym bag. What was inside of that bag would be the weapon that he'd use to carry out a very devious plan. This is the Louisville Bank Massacre. Hello, friend, and welcome to High Time Crime. My name's Joel, and on here I specialize in true crime and also couch surfing. Cowabunga! But anyway, today we're going over the case of a seemingly normal person who had everything going for him, but in reality, he was secretly evil and deceitful. For our story, we're heading to Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky's largest city with a population of 629,000 people. One of those people just so happened to be harboring some awful thoughts. Connor James Sturgeon was born on February 11th of 1998 in Indianapolis, Indiana to Todd and Lisa Sturgeon. He also has a younger brother. Now, information about Connor's early life isn't too known, but we do know some things. Connor was heavily involved in both basketball and football. His father, Todd, was the men's basketball coach for the University of Indianapolis from 1992 to 2007. In 2007, Todd decided to step down from this position to have more time with his boys. He had been watching his son Connor at a basketball camp, and the thought hit him. His exact statement was, It just came down to having young children. The time demands the job requires to do it right and kind of being at the point of my life where I needed to make a decision to be a lifer and coach forever or give something else a try. He further said, I wanted to give something else a try that didn't require me to be away from home so much. Now, by the time Connor was in eighth grade, he had gotten so many concussions that he was out for most of the year. In high school, he had gotten many more. It's unclear exactly how many concussions he had or exactly how long he was out of sports or school, but it was very severe. Connor's father, Todd, at this point became the head coach of Connor's school or Floyd Central High School. Todd was also a history teacher. Connor was a varsity basketball player and he also ran track. In the year 2016, he was a senior and ran the 400 meter dash and became the regional champion. Connor had to wear a helmet to protect his head while playing basketball because of the amount of concussions that he received. One of his Instagram profiles was literally called Mr. Concussion, but Connor was a very good basketball player, constantly being one of the top scorers. Connor was also a National Merit Scholar, and during his senior year, he was selected to be Mr. Floyd Central. This was an award given to one senior every year for their academic performance. In high school is when Connor started to date his girlfriend. They'd continue to date for a very long time, but she'll only come into the story for a brief period later. In 2016 still, Connor graduated from high school. At this point, he was considered to be very smart, popular, and overall a really cool guy. After he graduated, he started attending the University of Alabama. Some articles state he was in a fraternity, others state that he was not, and that he actually had a really hard time making friends and fitting in. While Connor was in college, in 2018, he wrote an essay on personal ethics and uploaded it to a website called Course Hero. This essay he wrote was about how he could improve himself and how he felt. 
He said, My self-esteem has long been a problem for me. As a late bloomer in middle school and high school, I struggled to a certain extent to fit in, and this has given me a somewhat negative self-image that persists today. Making friends has never been especially easy, so I have more experience than most in operating alone. Furthermore, college has introduced a whole new atmosphere and new challenges, so it is easy to feel like I am not doing as well as I should be. This semester, however, I think I have begun to mature socially and am beginning to see improvement in this area. I have found that taking time out to take stock of how I feel and what I can do to feel better has helped me be more social and in turn feel better about myself. He continued to write about how he used to not have to study and get good grades. Obviously, as my classes get harder, it becomes much harder to take shortcuts. I continue to battle against myself, but I believe I have improved and can continue to do so. This same year, or 2018, is when Connor began an internship at the Old National Bank in Louisville, Kentucky. I read that his father helped him get the connection to start interning there. But Connor, in 2020, would graduate from the University of Alabama. He obtained a presidential scholarship, which is one of the highest honors, and he graduated with a double major in economics and finance and a master's of science degree. Connor was a seemingly very successful person with a great family, good friends, and a girlfriend. He knew everything about the NBA all the players, teams, etc. He was a fan of the Dallas Mavericks, and he really enjoyed watching Alabama college football. Some could say he was a huge fan. And speaking of huge, Huge Casino is a mobile game that's free to download on iOS and Android, and it's basically an entire universe of casino games. This ranges from old classic slot machines to new and modernized ones, and they're inspired by the real thing. Not only can you play slots, but also blackjack, poker, roulette, and baccarat. As soon as you start, you'll be given a welcome bonus that totals 5 million chips. Now, just a heads up, this game doesn't actually use real money or give out money prizes. It's all for entertainment. But after getting accustomed to the game, you can invite friends to play and compete in the billionaire league to really build up those chips. What I like about Huge Casino is that they have so many games to choose from and that you can collect cool little charms along your journey. Now, my favorite was the slot Huge Diamond Wins, and that's because I got to spin the wheel and win a prize, and won 1 million ships, and got this cool animation. It made me feel like I was on top of the world. You can download Huge Casino for free by using the link in my description to get an automatic 5 million ships, and it really helps me out if you do. Let me know in the comments what your personal favorite slot was, but thank you to Huge Casino for sponsoring this video. Connor also did volunteer work, and his future seemed super bright. So for him to do what he soon will, seem to be completely out of character. Not too long after Connor graduated from college, in 2021, I believe, he moved in with his good friend Dallas. Connor and Dallas met while in college, and Dallas decided to buy a house and invite Connor to stay with him. They'd typically have people over and play beer pong or just kinda chill. Their neighbors said they were quiet and never caused any trouble. Also, in 2021, Connor started actually working at the Old National Bank. He had interned every summer since 2018. His initial job was as a commercial development professional, 
and then he transitioned into a better position the next year in 2022. I'll read his LinkedIn for you. I am a syndications associate and portfolio banker with Old National Bank in Louisville following completion of the ONB Commercial Banking Development Training Program in April of 2022. I am certified in the RMA Lending Decision process, hold a master's in finance from the University of Alabama, and am on the Young Professionals Board for Junior Achievement of Kentuckiana. So Connor seemed to be very well adjusted, but in 2022, he started to have panic attacks and bad anxiety while he was in Florida for spring break. And so afterwards, he began to see a psychiatrist and also a counselor. The psychiatrist prescribed him Alprazolam, or better known as and I believe a few other medications, though I'm not sure of their names. After a few months, Connor seemed to be doing better, but in reality, he was slipping somehow. Within about a year from this, he would do something absolutely sickening. On Monday, April 3rd of 2023, something happened to Connor. Now, what that exactly was, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think anyone is. The next day on Tuesday, April 4th, Connor called his mother, Lisa, and told her that he had a panic attack the day before. Lisa asked him what he thinks caused it, and Connor replied that he wasn't too sure. Lisa told him that they're going to get him help, and the next day on Wednesday, they had lunch together. Connor said that he wanted to go on FMLA, which is the Family and Medical Leave Act, which would allow him to leave his job temporarily so he could get things together. It allows you to have up to 12 weeks of unpaid leave. Lisa then called Connor's psychiatrist and set up an appointment for the next day or Thursday. Connor and his parents attended the meeting, and it was a video conference call. The psychiatrist said to increase his dosage of medicine. Lisa said that by the end of the call, Connor seemed to be doing better. But in reality, Connor was not doing better. He was absolutely falling apart and secretly planning something very evil. Connor, on that Monday, or April 3rd, started to write in his notebook, and I'm going to read you pretty much everything he wrote. This day, he wrote about his life. I'm guessing what he didn't like and that something happened. It begins by saying what I believe he didn't exactly like or some things that were affecting him. Pointless, meaningless, nothing to live for. Need to make an impact, affect change somehow. Collapse, inflation, maybe? No kids, climate disaster, gun access, lack of mental health care, politicians with no interest in helping people. Connor then lists things that are good about his life. Good grades, perfect girlfriend, good career. He then starts to get dark again. Inescapability of depression, over a year of trying to do everything, therapy, meds, healthy relationship with former friends, working out, saving money. He says that he cannot continue to fail for nothing, soft, but he can't have it anymore. The next day on Tuesday, April 4th, Connor went out and bought an AR-15 and he writes about it and some more of his thoughts. He wrote, Goals, tell my story and impact change, gun access. He wrote stars and said that it was not senseless and that something snapped Monday. He continued by saying, Story, good family, no issues, good grades, no debt, did everything right. Add foot and door with career through nepotism, aka his father's help his girlfriend's name, but didn't add anything to it, but always struggled with anxiety. I'm not sure what's in parentheses. Attempt last year, psych facility, got all available treatment, 
able to buy gun, nothing to live for, world dying, have kids gone. I can't make out the second part, but I believe it could be rope around neck. Politicians with no interest in making things better and stop letting anyone buy guns or this will keep happening. Connor continues by writing at the bottom, I have decided to make an impact. These people did not deserve to die, but because I was depressed and able to buy underscore guns, they are gone. Perhaps this is the impact for change. Upper class white people dying. I certainly would not have been able to do this were it more difficult to get a gun. Explanation of process. Just walked in 45 minutes, get AR-15. Here's the receipt of exactly what Connor purchased and for how much. Connor finished this day's journal entry with, I know our politicians are solely focused on lining their own pockets, but maybe this will knock some sense into them. If not, good luck. The day after this, or Wednesday, April 5th, Connor took this very creepy photo, and I'm not exactly sure why, but there's a stark difference from this picture to others. Now after that Thursday session of therapy, Connor didn't get any better. He got much worse, and what he was already planning, he was making it come to fruition. Connor on Saturday, April 8th, to the early morning of Sunday, April 9th, or Easter, wrote again in his notebook, but this time he wrote letters to his friends, family, and girlfriend, and also a will. I'll read you a few of those so we can really understand what was occurring. First, Connor wrote to his brother, who was just a few years younger. He said, I'm sorry for what I have to do and that I have to write this. I love you so much. You have been a perfect brother, even though I sometimes had to play peacekeeper around the house. I always admired your ambition, motivation, stubbornness, mostly, and passion for what you believed in. I wish I would have fought harder like you always do. Keep standing up for what you believe in and trying to do whatever you can to make people's lives better. And hopefully keep enjoying Pokemon as much as we always did. Love you forever, Connor. Then Connor wrote to his girlfriend since high school. He stated, I love you so, so, so much. I'm so sorry that I have to write this but I cannot bear my own burden anymore. I have loved every second we spent together without exception. You have no idea how much I appreciated how accepting, kind, goofy, supportive, and wonderful you have been to me. From letting me be myself, a complete nerd, to always being a positive influence on my attitude and drinking, to coming along whenever I wanted to go anywhere, to getting me off my rear end when I needed to. You are perfect and I will always love you. Keep being a positive impact on those around you and do what makes you happy. I don't think there's an afterlife, but if there is, I'll be waiting for you. I love you forever, Connor. Connor also wrote a will and in it he stated he was of a sound mind and body. Last is Connor's note to his parents, and this one's the longest. He wrote, Mom and Dad, I'm sorry for what I have to do. You two have been the most supportive, understanding parents on the planet as I have struggled through the past few years, but I cannot take it anymore. I can't take the pressure of life, the expectations I put on myself, the idea that there was nothing to work towards, that I have no purpose. I cannot say enough how much I love you both and that there is nothing else that anyone could have done for me, but I am at least going to try to have some impact at the end here. Last week, I walked into a gun store and walked out with an AR-15, three additional magazines, and 120 rounds of ammunition. 45 minutes later, all I had to do was lie that a friend got his house broken into, check some boxes that I hadn't been institutionalized, false, or would use it for violence, also false. This country and its politicians have decided that money is more valuable than lives. Let's see if that changes once the, I believe he says, fat cats start feeling the pain. 
They won't listen to words or peaceful protests, so let's see if they listen to bullets. Hopefully, the lives lost tomorrow can save some in the future. Please do what you can to help others and to stop the sale of WMDs to psychopaths like me. I love you both forever. Connor. P.S. Please read through my note here to try to understand why I am doing this. This is not senseless. And if anyone sends thoughts and prayers, give them the wrath of God. After these notes, he wrote, Connor went to hang out with his family because it was Easter Sunday. Connor's father, Todd, said he watched Connor go egg hunting and that he seemed to be perfectly fine. Later in the day, Connor watched the Masters golf tournament with one of his friends. No one expected anything. Connor appeared so normal, but he was deceptive and deceitful, and this was absolutely on purpose. Later into the night, we get what was Connor's last notes that he wrote at about 11.30 p.m. He started by saying, Other thoughts. I am just tired of fighting. I was never going to reach anywhere near my full potential. I couldn't even handle a BS office job at a bank. I don't think I am a t or a monster. I may be a psycho. I am definitely very sick. No one ever knew the full extent. I knew how to lie and give people the answers they wanted or needed to hear. The alternative was getting institutionalized again or spinning my wheels on new medications or more therapy. Then, at about 11.50 p.m., Connor wrote, for the last time, Oh my God, this is so easy. Seriously, I knew it would be doable, but this is ridiculous. Walked in, bought a gun, four mags and 120 rounds for $700, got some glasses and earplugs, got my letters and social posts teed up, I believe he said that, outfit ready, time of team meeting and boardroom, dressed a bit casual with jeans, but I shrug it off, change into shirt with frock it for Instagram live. I think he's combining the word front and pocket here. I don't know. Text his roommate the plan for this notebook, OD go to work. He further writes, it is legitimately unfathomable how easy this all was. I always knew I was A, cunning, and B, mean as absolute, and C, a way better liar than anyone gave me credit for. The secret is leading with, yeah, I've always been a bad liar, never cheated on a girl though, but good heavens, I just lied to everyone so easily and no one caught on. That is intentional. There is nothing anyone could have done, I'll say it again. There is nothing anyone could have done. It only would have delayed the inevitable. I know how sick I am, and with this, the sickness wins, but on my terms. And the last things that he wrote was, I am sorry, and I can't take it anymore. After this, Connor went to sleep, and the next time he'd wake up, his terrible and evil plan would become real. On Monday, April 10th of 2023, at the age of 25, Connor woke up and got ready to act. He dressed casually, wearing a blue button-down shirt, a white t-shirt underneath, blue jeans, a black belt, gray socks, and gray shoes. Connor put together a gym bag full of a shirt to change into, his AR-15, extra magazines, earplugs, and goggles. At about 7.30 to 7.45 a.m., Connor posted three Instagram posts. First is of Kylo Ren from Star Wars saying, I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. The second one is a meme that says, I could burn this whole place down, and he put Monday vibes on the top. The third and final one states, they won't listen to words or protests. Let's see if they hear this. After this, Connor texted his family saying, I love you, texted his girlfriend, and also left a voicemail for his roommate. Connor told his roommate he's going to kill everyone at his job. Immediately, Connor's roommate, or Dallas, 
called Connor's mom, Lisa, and she then called or texted Connor's father, Todd, who was driving his car at the time. Lisa also called 911, and here's that phone call. 911, Operator Valves, where is your emergency? Yes, my, um, I could, my, my son might be having, he apparently has a gun and he's heading toward the Old National at uh, on Main Street here in Louisville. Main Street, Old National? Yes, and I, this is his mother. I'm so sorry. I'm getting details secondhand. I'm running into it now. Oh, my Lord. Okay. And what exactly is going on with him? Why, what, it, what is he saying he's doing? I, I don't know. I'm getting this information from the roommate. He apparently left a note. I think he's on... I, I don't know what to do. I need your help. I, I think he, he's never hurt me once. He's a really good kid. Please don't come up to him. Okay. And you said he was headed to the old national thing. Did he say what he was going to do there? I don't know. I don't know anything. He, but he, we don't even own guns. I don't know where he would have gotten a gun. Okay, okay, so where did you get something. this information from? Who told you what's, what's going on? His roommate called me. He's, he's, he's not violent. Mm -hmm. He's never done anything. Okay, and you don't believe he owns guns? I know he doesn't own any guns. Okay, and so did the roommate mention him having any weapons or anything? Um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get into my car. My <laughs> son's talking to me, and they're asking me questions about other things. Um, uh, and I'm shaking. Uh, I, I think maybe his girlfriend. Family has done. Okay. I don't know. Maybe he saw them. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. So should I? What, what do I do? Just go there? No, I don't want you to go to the location. Okay. I'm. You what, don't want to no, I don't want you to go to the location, ma'am. We have, a, we have a situation that's going on down there right now. We've already had calls from other people, and I do not need you to go to the location at this time, okay? It's dangerous there. You've had calls from other people, so he's already there? Now, after this realization that Connor was already there, what he was doing was pure evil. First off, he arrived to the old National Bank at 8.15 a.m., carrying with him the gym bag he put together. Connor then went inside and walked over to his office and sat in there for about 15 to 20 minutes or so. What he was doing for that time was probably hyping himself up or something. But at 8.35 a.m., 12 seconds in, he walked out of his office. This time, he was carrying his rifle and magazines. Connor put his earplugs in and goggles on and started an Instagram Live video and Thus began his rampage. He first encountered a woman about 20 seconds later, and she was standing in the hallway outside of the meeting that the other team members were having. Once again, Connor knew about this meeting and wrote about it, so he figured this would be his perfect opportunity. Connor said to the woman in the hallway that it's time to go, and he then pointed his gun at her and pulled the trigger. It didn't go off because he didn't chamber around, and so Connor pulled the charging handle and then shot this woman in the leg. It was said that he was very inexperienced with firearms and had no idea really how to work it. Next, Connor walked into the conference room, and there was 13 people in there. Panic ensued, and everyone tried running away, and Connor just started firing at all that he could. I believe from what I've read, he was blocking the entrance door and just shooting inside. People were trying to hide and do anything they could to survive, and 12 out of 13 of those people were shot, while five of them died. One woman miraculously managed to get out of the conference room, somehow completely unharmed. But a plethora of 911 calls came in, and so here's a few of those. 911, Operator Davis, what is the address of the emergency? Um, um, oh my god, what's the address of Weston Boy? Oh my god, there's an active shooter there. But, um, oh my god, oh my god, I just want to do it. Oh, I am at 333 East Main Street. We have an active shooter in our building. Do you have a description building. of the person? White, male, first name. He's an employee of Old National Bank. Get here now. We need okay, somebody what color, now. Okay, what color shirt is he wearing? Yeah, what color shirt did he have on? White? I don't know. White, I okay. think. He's a tall guy. Where, probably 6'4". Six, probably six, do we know first where in the floor. building? Okay. First floor. Do we know where on the first floor that he is now? 
We don't. Okay, stop yelling, we sir. Stop. They're already on their way. Do we know yeah, how many people they Yeah, because you don't an answer. They had already, people have already been calling, sir. For the next several minutes, Connor walked around the building until he started getting into firefights with the police as they just arrived on scene. His main focus was now the police, though after shooting some rounds at them, he saw two co-workers and tried to hit them, but missed. They ran away afterwards. Connor then about 30 seconds later at 8.41 a.m. saw two officers. This was Officer Nicholas Wilt, who had literally just been sworn in as an officer on March 30th, not even two weeks before. The other officer is unnamed, but Nicholas ended up getting shot in the head during this. I believe that the officer that was with him also got shot, but in the leg. That was at about 8.41 a.m. At 8.42 a.m., Connor shot two rounds at Officer Wilt while he was on the ground, and as officers were trying to help him. For the next minute, Connor then tried to find a better position to get into a firefight, and at 8.43 a.m., everything finally ended. Officer Corey C.J. Galloway was one of the officers there, and he managed to take out Connor. Officer Galloway shot him in the leg, arm, and finally the head, and after the head shot, he was dead. This entire occurrence lasted about eight minutes or so, and the police genuinely responded as fast as they possibly could. They were very commendable in this situation, and their bravery was outstanding. Connor's parents had arrived to the scene of the bank, but obviously weren't allowed in, and they couldn't believe what just happened. Nobody could. How this seemingly normal guy literally one day randomly snaps and becomes a monster. Connor said that he was a great liar and managed to fool everyone, which in that way he was right, but it doesn't take away what he did or will be remembered for. None of his accolades matter or anything good that he did. It will always be drowned out by this evilness. No one truly knew what Connor was capable of. Not even those closest to him who he saw only a day before his crime on Easter Sunday. Nobody could sense that there was something awful brewing, and it's just truly sad. After Connor's death, an autopsy was done, and he was found to have alprazolam in his system, but that was it. It was also determined that he did not have CTE or a brain injury from his absurd amount of concussions. This was very much speculated in April of 2023 when it happened. Connor was like he wrote down, a sound mind and body, but a person who's in that state does not do what he did. Connor killed five innocent people that day and injured many more. Those people that were killed deserve to be remembered. Deanna Eckerd was 57 years old and working as an executive administrative officer at Old National Bank. Deanna was a great mother, wife, friend, sister, and daughter, and she was described as being a beautiful soul. It was said by her cousin that Deanna always had something positive to say and always found the good in things. Thomas Elliott was 63 years old and the senior vice president at Old National Bank. He was also a father, husband, friend, and so much more. Thomas spent 42 years of his life working in banking, and by this point, it had really paid off. He was well-respected, loved, and always thought about what he could do for others. Thomas had great dad jokes, and he really wanted to make his community a better place. James Jim Tut Jr., he went by Jim, was 64 years old and a market executive at Old National Bank. He had spent about 30 years in commercial banking and had been with the company since 2015. Jim was a very helpful man, a father, grandfather, husband, friend, you name it. Jim loved going to sports camps and helping out and just doing anything he could for his community. Joshua Michael Barrick was 40 years old and was the senior vice president in the commercial real estate banking group at Old National Bank. He had a very successful banking career and also had a wife and children. 
Josh was considered to be a great husband who would do anything for anyone, even a stranger. It's said that Josh had a heart full of gold and loved spending time with his children. Juliana Maria Farmer was 45 years old and working as a commercial banking agent at Old National Bank. She had only been working at this branch for two weeks and one day, as she was previously working at Old National Bank, just in a different location. Juliana was a mother and was looking forward to being a grandmother soon. It said that she drew people in with her warmth and beautiful smile. I really hope that everyone murdered in this senseless tragedy is resting peacefully, and for those that were injured, I hope that they heal. I do know that Officer Nicholas Wilt has since made an okay recovery after being shot in the head. His family said he was doing well in August of 2023. Officer Wilt was able to go home after 109 days at the hospital. He was a hero in this for running right at the problem and not being afraid. But anyways, thank you for watching this episode of High Time Crime. If true crime is your thing, then please like and subscribe because it's all we do. I also have an all-exclusive Patreon if you're interested in that. There's a bunch of tiers to choose from, and the third one allows for you to see a Patreon-only video, and that tier and the second one allow you to have your name at the end of each High Time Crime video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, friend. And just remember that you can download Huge Casino by using the link in my description. Thanks again, Huge Casino.